Hey folks, here are OS Reviews for watching our video first look and a quick review of the Ace PCW5. Believe it or not, this is a full-blown Windows 10 computer the size of a slightly larger USB thumb drive. So it's derived from a concept like the Intel Computing Stick, which came out about two years ago, and it's known as a micro PC, which is great for portability if you don't need a really powerful machine, but you still want to have something like Excel, Word, or PowerPoint, and the ability to do some very light kind of word processing and browsing of the web, this could be a powerful companion to travel with uh, to show files and documents with colleagues, friends, and family members since it really is so portable. It sells on Amazon for $99, which is also fairly affordable for what it is. It runs on a fairly typical Intel uh, Atom uh, processor, which is either Intel Cherry Trail or Intel Bay Trail uh, Z-series processor. So in this case, we have the Bay Trail uh, Z3735F, but there's also kind of the Atom Z3 8300 that sells for a little bit more. Uh, again, this one has uh, Windows 10, two gigabytes of built-in RAM, and uh, 32 gigs of built-in storage, uh, expandable via micro SD card, or if you want to plug in a hard drive or something like that. And again, it has dual band Wi-Fi as well, which is actually quite impressive. So packaging here, very simple, sliding it up. We have just the Ace PCW5 on the right. We'll take a closer look at this in a second. And below, we have a, a travel pouch as an extra accessory that you can use to protect it when you're on the move. There's also a HDMI kind of extension cable. So uh, in the same design uh, as something like the Chromecast, uh, where there's a direct built-in HDMI cable, but if it's too short and you can't reach the back of your monitor or television, you can use this extension cable that's provided. Finally, there is the charger, which you can see is using a standard micro USB-based lead, which is actually pretty convenient. And that's it. There's also a very basic user guide on the bottom. So this runs on a fully activated, again, version of Windows 10 Home Edition, so pretty stock. There's not too much uh, bloatware pre-installed, but you have access to the Microsoft Store, you have access to Internet uh, Explorer, Edge, File Manager, and again, basic utilities. The size, again, of the unit is extremely portable, and it's made out of a shiny, reflective, piano black, kind of glossy plastic, but it feels all right. Kind of lightweight, the edges are quite sharp. This is a fanless unit, but there are ventilation grills to prevent it from overheating. There's the Intel logo presented on the very top, and on the side here, there's a dedicated power switch, micro USB for power, two USB 2.0 ports for uh, I.O. and accessories, and uh, keyboard, mouse, things like that. There's also the micro SD card for expanding the memory, and even a lanyard, since this thing really is so small that you can tuck it onto a keychain or you know put it onto a backpack, uh, which is, again, pretty incredible just uh, to think about how much computing technology has evolved over the years. Um, a few years ago, you know, UMPCs was a dream, but even that was much less powerful than this in terms of computing speed. And also, of course, since it has a screen, it's also a lot larger. So this really is as small as computers get here in 2017. For some basic size comparisons, here is a calculator, so you can really tell the difference in size. And then here is kind of a standard MP3 or MP4 player, similar to something like the iPod Nano. So this thing is tiny. All right, so next let's take a quick look at the UI and the performance. Here we have the initial boot up screen, so we're just gonna tap on English, uh, and then we can set up things like time and date. Tapping on next, it's probably gonna tell us to quickly find a Wi-Fi network, um, as well as agree to the licensing terms of Windows. So it does seem to be, again, a very clean install of uh, Windows 10 on board, which is good. We'll use the Express settings, and after about uh, three minutes of uh, initial kind of setting up of uh, programs, connecting to the internet, getting some basic updates done, we should be greeted to a again, very stock install of Windows 10. There are a few corrections I want to make. The computer itself isn't fanless. There's actually a very small fan that kicks in, uh, especially when it's plugged in to power and it's been running for a while, but it's not loud at all. Uh, in fact, uh, it's almost silent, I would say, and doesn't disrupt from you know presentations or anything like that. It's quite quiet, a lot more silent than a traditional laptop computer, but it is there. Uh, Temperature-wise, it remains fairly cool even after running for about an hour, so it does a pretty good job of ventilating the heat, especially with that small fan on board. The speeds here are also decent, as you can see, as far as general navigation around the UI is concerned. Again, 2 gigs of RAM and the Intel Atom chipset are definitely lower-end uh, 
you know, configurations for any computer. So make sure you have your expectations tempered. Uh, so you're not expecting lightning fast responsiveness. So you don't want to run, you know, too many programs or apps at once. But as long as you have a reasonable amount of tabs open in the browser, roughly, you know, three or four, uh, and some, you know, light productivity tools, you're not running Photoshop or anything extreme, then the performance will be a lot better than you expect and actually does a pretty good job. Again, Windows 10 for the first time, it does take a little longer to fully boot, but afterwards it will take roughly 15 to uh, 25 seconds on a clean boot into the operating system. And here we are, this is the basic desktop and you can see that we have access to Wi-Fi connected already just because we set it up during the initial boot and there's also Bluetooth available if you want to connect to a mouse or headphones uh, since there aren't any built-in speakers of the computing stick. Uh, time of day has been updated automatically and there's even Cortana on board so you can access, uh, you know, that AI assistant if you want to use it for quick searches or ask it something and it will search the web for you. Uh, there's also the ability for you to use any of the Windows Hello tools. So if you want to connect a fingerprint reader to unlock it, you can also add those accessories yourself. You can see that the main UI here is actually surprisingly responsive and fluid. A little bit of delay here and there. Once everything is fully loaded, it should remain quite snappy. And here we have kind of the Windows tiles uh, imported from, of course, Metro UI on Windows 8. You can see that there are very very little kind of bloatware on here. Everything that you see is pretty much on a clean install of Windows 10 Home Edition, including system utilities, you have a calculator, there is Skype preview sticky notes, uh, photos, you have document viewers, Internet Edge, Cortana, alarms, paint, notepad, calendar, stuff like that. Over here we have some uh, apps which are recommended but not pre-installed on the machine, and you can also customize these tiles as you want to install more programs and apps. So. Uh, there is, of course, updates sporadically since it's Windows 10, but you can disable, disable those in the system settings if you want to just have it run on the current version and you're worried that the memory is going to get full or something like that. But it's pretty snappy and responsive uh, for general navigation around the UI. Uh, on the bottom here, I can also toggle between uh, the traditional view uh, and also kind of the what's called the tablet view, but it doesn't really make sense since this is a computing stick. It's basically a replacement for something like a desktop, uh, but of course a fraction of the size. But if you want to activate the tablet mode, let's say your monitor supports touch, it basically becomes a lot more similar to Windows 8. And now you can simply touch on the tiles, uh, a keyboard will pop up virtually, and it's easier for touch navigation. Uh, but anyways, that's just the difference, and I can turn off tablet mode to go back to desktop. So again, Edge is the built-in uh, web browser. There isn't Chrome pre-installed, but you can download those yourself. It is a full-blown Windows computer, so you can run any of the legacy apps that you would want uh, from any other older version of Windows. So if you're moving over from a Windows 7 or a Windows XP desktop, you'll be right at home and you can carry out any of the traditional programs uh, such as Excel, Word document, so on and so forth. I would just be a little cautious since again the memory at 32 gigs is a little low. If we go into system utilities or system files, we can take a quick look at just how much memory is left. And it seems like we have roughly 21.2 gigs free out of 28 gigs. So you can see a certain amount has been taken up by the operating system. Um, we can also take a look at system properties here. And indeed, we are running on a 32-bit version of uh, Windows 10. Processor speed at 1.33 gigahertz, 2 gigs of RAM. And again, Windows is fully updated and uh, activated. So it's running on a legit version of Windows. So here we're loading up a video through uh, inter Internet Edge, and we have YouTube loaded up. Uh, this video itself, you can see it's uh, streaming pretty well using internet and the default resolution has been set at 720p, which is pretty good. And you can see that uh, have no real problems loading up even longer videos through Edge. It seems fairly swift as far as buffering is concerned. I can scrub ahead and it's going to load in just a few seconds. So it actually makes for a pretty good media experience, believe it or not, for viewing back uh, content up to 4K as supported. And you can also stream some 3D movies if you want to. Uh, so again, it's quite powerful as an entertainment tool as well if you're using it to replace maybe a Android TV box that's aging. Um, but of course, you would have to install your own programs like Kodi uh, and of course uh, import your own files uh, or at least download some 
uh, you know, bookmarks onto the browser. Now, in general, though, Chrome is still going to be faster than Edge for more advanced pages like the New York Times to render. It gives you faster speeds, and since this is technically a desktop that will be plugged into power at all times, power consumption really isn't a problem. So I would recommend downloading Chrome if you want the fastest experience for web browsing. And again, I will limit your tabs to maybe four or five uh, at a time if you want, again, the fastest performance out of that two gigs of built-in RAM. But overall, it works pretty well. Now, internet connection speeds are also fairly decent. You can see I have roughly uh, three to four bars consistently. I didn't have any dropped connections. With that being said, I have read some previous articles of people complaining about the Wi-Fi antenna, which makes sense because the body of the W5 is so small, there's not a lot of space to put a powerful antenna. Uh, and some folks claim that if the router is really far away, then it performs worse than other laptops and TV boxes that they've seen. Um, and some people have also kind of doubted whether it really is dual band or if it's only 2.4G. But regardless, in my testing at least, it performs quite well on Wi-Fi. And I didn't have any problems as far as internet speeds. Now, the W5 doesn't have a traditional Ethernet port, so for wired internet, you have to get your own adapter if you want to use that instead of, uh, wire, instead of wireless internet. So overall, web browsing actually works quite well. Um, again, you can do some basic gaming uh, and, and uh, mobile apps that you may want to download from the uh, Microsoft Store for entertainment, but uh, all in all, it works pretty well, again, for these light tasks like word processing and some light media. So that's been the Ace PC Pocket PC W5. Overall, I think it's a pretty good buy if you are looking for a micro PC, something that values portability above performance. The price really isn't bad either for the configurations that you're getting. Um, it's about the same as what you'd pay for a Bay Trail or Cherry Trail entry-level 7-inch, 8-inch Windows tablet. Uh, this, of course, uh, gets even smaller to that, so if you already have a display, a projector, and you just need something small to bring to share files uh, on a television with friends, family or colleagues this makes for a pretty powerful companion uh, it's not quite as inexpensive at the moment as the Intel computing stick but that one is older and less powerful in terms of internals this one also has a bit more storage and so for those basic tasks I think you'll be pleased and again I'm always surprised by how well it performs for a full-blown computer that fits really in the palm of your hand thanks for watching this video here at OS reviews this has been the ace PC w5 micro PC